I just got off a call with a friend of mine who was in our coaching programs and in our membership. He runs a $50 million plus company. He was able to get out of the day-to-day -day tactics of his business, turn a lot of leadership of the business. He's written a book, he's gotten in shape, he's working out. And he just told me today, the most important thing that he learned in our mastermind was taking care of yourself. I work with entrepreneurs to help put systems and structure into businesses to make it so that the visionary, like my friend is, spends less and less time in the business, but the business scales faster so that you have the time to actually be a visionary. We work on structure, we work on process, we work on planning, we show entrepreneurs how to run business in a totally different way. And what that does for visionary entrepreneurs is free up a ton of time and space so that we can see what to do next, so that we can understand what our business needs, so that we can get really clear on our mission, our vision, and understand how to communicate those things to our team in a systematic way. And over the course of time that I worked with this individual, a $50 million plus company, and and you know, we work with entrepreneurs in, in all ranges, starting usually right around a million or just before a million and up to the tens of millions. You know, what you see in the market today is people that say things like, get up in the morning, drink a cup of coffee, get to work, don't waste time, grind all day, work all day, figure out what you wanna do. And you know what happens? When you're early in your career, you start feeling like that actually creates success. I can tell you from, from my own personal experience, I lived that way in my 20s and for a lot of my 30s. I'm 50 today and when I look Look back at those times, I created success. I had successful businesses. In my 20s, I built a consultancy. We had offices in the US and Latin America. I had a large team. We were working with some of the largest corporations on the planet and working with some of the largest retailers. We represented some of the biggest companies. We had a wildly successful company, but it almost killed me. By the time I was 30, I was over 300 pounds taking prescription medications. I was already on four. They were going to put me on a fifth. And I had a meeting with my doctor and he told me I was his most likely case for a heart attack. And at the time I lived in South Florida and he made it clear he had an aging patient population. So I was one of his youngest patients, most likely risk for a heart attack. And here's why. When we are hustling all the time, grinding all the time, when we never take a minute for ourselves, when we don't take care of ourselves, here's what happens. We might actually create some success. The hustle cannot be underestimated in the entrepreneurial world. Like we have to have some of that. But if that's all you ever do, and you don't take care of yourself, and you don't look up and say, what is it do I really want? What is it that I really wanna be doing? If you're just getting up and grabbing a cup of coffee and going to work and getting after it, what can happen over time is you build yourself into positions you really don't wanna be in. When I look back at my career, now having been 50, own dozens of companies, most of them multi-million dollars, some of them eight figures, I've created a tremendous amount of wealth for myself. I, I will never be in a situation again where I don't know how to pay bills. I could, for the most part, quit right now and if I manage things correctly, I, I wouldn't have to work for the rest of my life. I, I'm at the point now where I'm doing stuff that I want to do that I'm excited about doing. But when I look back at my career, I know that the times I was rushing the hardest, the times that I was pushing the hardest, the times where I wasn't introspecting, I wasn't taking time to myself, I wasn't taking care of myself, I might have created financial success, but I almost always built myself into a place that I don't want to be. And recently, I've seen almost an epidemic in the entrepreneurial world of people building very successful companies and shutting them down. One of the people that I, I saw recently, her name's Vanessa Lau, and she's been very public about this. I'm, I'm super proud of her for sharing her journey with people. The entire time she's been an entrepreneur, she's shared her journey. She shared it here on YouTube. And she shared the startup, she shared the good things, she shared the challenging things. She is very open, very self-aware, very real about who she is. And she recently shared that she had built her business into the multiple millions. I think it was approaching eight figures. I'm not certain, but I think it was. She had almost gotten to, I think, a million subscribers on YouTube. She was, you know, driving towards that for so long. And she, from the way she tells it, got up one day and started really looking at what was going on and realized she had built herself into a place she didn't want to be. She built herself into a place where she was uncomfortable every day. I don't want to speak for Vanessa. In fact, let me instead say, here's what I see in most of the entrepreneurs that are going through this experience of building up businesses and shutting them down. We build ourselves into a place where we're anxious and we're frustrated on a daily basis and we're in that fight, flight, fawn or freeze pattern all of the time. We start feeling like we're procrastinating, like we're not good enough, like there's nothing we can do better. We start feeling challenged by the day. You know, you wake up every day and as entrepreneurs, we're a tiny little percentage of the population that gets to, to make up the rules for what to do. We get to, to literally make up the rules for our lives. But so often when we're just pushing, when we're just going, when we are not taking care of ourselves, we start making up the 
game so that we're gonna lose. And what I see over and over again is the same thing that happened to me when I was in my 20s. I built a really successful company. And when I was 30, I met my wife, Katie. And the shift in my perspective on everything in life after meeting Katie was almost immediate. And I remember thinking, I just, I don't wanna have this business anymore. I'm uncomfortable every day. I'm anxious on a daily basis. I know there's mentors out there. I know there's coaches out there. I know some of the most popular people on YouTube today say things like you got to suck it up and you've got to have grit and you've got to keep going and you can't just, you know, bail out. You've got to push harder and hustle harder and, and just, you know, you'll work it out in the long term. And I just don't know if that's true. For too long, I've worked with entrepreneurs who have gotten themselves into a place where they want to shut everything down and run away and hide. And for too long, I've worked with entrepreneurs who have gotten themselves to a place where they look up and they have all the success that they think they wanted to have, but they don't really have the lives that they want. And when we are in a place where we don't take time for ourselves, where we don't have self-care practices, whatever it is for you, for me, it's things like meditation and breath work and using an infrared sauna and cold plunging. And when the lights go down, I put on orange glasses to calm my nervous system so that I sleep a lot better and I wake up feeling refreshed. And... I do a lot of introspection and planning. I actually sit down on a daily basis and I, do, I don't just plan my day. Ahead of time, I plan my quarter, I plan my month. I get clear on what I really want. So I know where I'm going and I know what the end result is and I'm not just hustling myself into a corner where I feel like I need to escape. You know, that is this challenge that we have as entrepreneurs. It's this double-edged sword. It takes a tremendous amount of effort for us to start running a business. And it takes a tremendous amount of effort for us to get something up and off the ground. And in order to do that, we do everything. But here's the problem. That doing everything conditions us to feel like we have to keep doing everything for the rest of time. And we don't put ourselves in a place where we start to delegate things and let go of things and get ourselves out of the day-to-day -day of the business and stop feeling like if we're we're not overwhelmed, we're doing something wrong. And so if you're an entrepreneur who's been around for a while or somebody who's just starting out, do you have to hustle? Absolutely. And does it take tremendous hard work and overcoming obstacles and figuring things out? It truly does. But if you're building into a place where you're not excited about where you're going, if you're building into a place where you don't really know where that threshold is, where you're gonna stop doing everything, if you're building into a place where every day things feel like they're getting heavier, they're getting harder, they're getting more challenging, you're building into a place that's gonna be uncomfortable. I share with entrepreneurs, if your days are getting tactically harder, and this is once you built a team, if your days are getting tactically harder, you're actually building a house of cards. Because if your days are getting tactically harder in the business, it means you're doing more and more for the business and your team isn't doing, isn't actually running the business, isn't actually sharing decision making, isn't actually executing, you're the one who's doing more and more on a daily basis. So as your business grows, if things are getting harder for you, that's a time to pause and say, am I actually delegating to my team? Do I trust the people around me? Do I have a system through which I'm operating my business and planning and executing so I don't end up in this place where I want to shut everything down? Because I've been in the masterminds, I've listened to the speakers. I've read the books that say if things are getting harder, you just have to push through it. And if you keep pushing and you keep pushing, eventually things will get easier. And that does happen sometimes. In fact, every one of us as entrepreneurs has had that period in our lives. And you probably know exactly what I'm talking about when I say, you know, it's that period in our lives where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And the people around us are saying, you're crazy, get out of the tunnel. That light is a train. They're saying, you're not good enough. You don't have the experience. You don't have the, you're too young, you're too old. You haven't been there before. They're telling you all the things that you shouldn't be doing. And, and in that period of our lives, we compel ourselves towards the end of the light, at the end of the tunnel, that light at the end of the tunnel. We compel it towards us. We step through that light and that is where we become who we are. I've been there. You've probably been there if you're an entrepreneur. But the challenge is sometimes when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, when we don't know what that threshold, what that goal is, when we're just hustling on a daily basis to make things bigger, to do more, to put more out there, to work harder, to make more things happen, sometimes we get to the point where we decide, hey, this is someplace I really don't wanna be. And so this is how you address that in your life. Make sure you're taking time for yourself. If you feel like you can make a million dollars in your life, then you are a million dollar racehorse. Now, and I, I don't say that lightly. What I mean by that is take care of yourself. Take the time to meditate, do some breath work, use a, a sauna like I do, cold plunge. These are the things I do. And do some planning, do some introspection. Make sure that you're looking at what is actually going on for you. You know, so many of us are working day to day in this place of fight or flight, the whole, you know, framework for that is fight, flight, 
fawn or freeze. And so many of us are stuck in one of those every day, but we're pushing forward. We think things will get better. We think we're gonna break through. And I just wanna give you license. I wanna give you permission to take a second and say, what am I really working for? When you get clear on that outcome, when you get clear in the present on what that is going to feel like in the future, you start creating that rather than just blindly building, making things happen, growing a business that you may wanna shut down someday. If you're an entrepreneur, you have an opportunity to make up the rules to your own game, make up rules so that you can win. If this was important to you, share it with an entrepreneur who needs to hear it and take a minute right now. I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and be here with me as I release more content to help entrepreneurs build teams, build businesses, and let's be honest, the most important part, build lives that we really want.